Hey, it's me, Mackenzie Marie, and today I'm gonna to be trying recipes made by a serial killer, specifically Dorothina Puentes. She killed seven of her tenants and buried them in her front yard. And in prison, she actually made a cookbook. How crazy is that? And let me tell you, there's some questionable recipes in here. Chicken gizzards, hearts, and livers. What is that? So today I'm gonna to be making a three course meal for my boyfriend. And then once he's tried all of them, I'm gonna tell him that they were made by a serial killer. Starting with the appetizer. My Fiesta Mexican styled fruit salsa. So let's get started. Dorothina had a pretty rough childhood growing up. Her parents actually died when she was six years old. And then she went to a boarding house, which was part of the foster care system. And while she was there, she was actually essay. By the time she was 16, she literally ran away. And that's when she started working as a sex worker. That was her only means of making money. So she was only doing that to survive. I don't know if you're supposed to leave the skin on a mango or not, but I'm going to. Actually, no, I'm not going to. That sounds disgusting. I don't really know what I'm doing. I'm just trying. Three years later, she went to jail for the first time for cashing fake checks. She served four months in jail. 12 years later, she was arrested again, but this time for running a brothel. She served 90 days in Sacramento County Jail. In 1961, Dorothina's second husband committed her to a hospital because she tried to kill herself. She had a complete drug episode. She had an alcohol problem. She was committing crimes. Her husband just didn't know how to help her. And while she was there, her doctors diagnosed her as a pathological liar with an unstable personality. And five years after that, her and her husband got a divorce. The one who admitted her to the hospital, you know, he just like couldn't take it. The bowl is too small, so I have to put the rest in here. This bowl is too small as well. Lovely. This smells pretty good so far. Not gonna lie. After the divorce, Dorothina started getting into caregiving. She had a home where she would allow young homeless girls to come and stay for free so they weren't in drugs or in sex work. Just a safe place for them to be and she would provide them a home free of charge. She would give them new clothes and she would cook them dinner and she would wash their sheets and clean their room. She would literally completely take care of these girls. In 1968, she met a man named Roberto Puentes. They instantly fell in love. They got married. This was her third husband. And 16 months later, he filed for divorce because of domestic abuse. He even filed a restraining order against her. And even though they did get a divorce, Dorothina ended up using his last name for 20 years. Hence, Dorothina Puentes. The divorce really affected her. So she decided to change up her act real quick. She started giving back to the community and helping out with the homeless. She started hosting alcoholic anonymous meetings and when she was there, she would tell the people, hey, sign up for social security benefits so you can get money from the government. The salsa is made. It looks pretty good. For the side I'm gonna make, Dorothina's orange glazed potatoes. Dorothina opens up her caregiving business, but now people actually pay to live there. She has full-time tenants. Most of these people though were like elderly, so they couldn't really take care of themselves. She would have to like give them showers and cut their hair and you know, take care of them give them their medicine when they need it. Because a lot of these people were old and disabled, they would get social security checks. One of the rules of living in Dorothina's caregiving housing was that you had to sign your social security checks over to her. She would take care of it because these people were older, you know, they couldn't really take care of their funds. So Dorothina actually, I just poured orange juice into that, whatever that is. The instructions in this book are not good. So Dorothina's running her caregiving business on 21st F Street in Sacramento, California. In 1978, she was charged and convicted of cashing 34 state and 
ran federal checks for her tenants. She was actually pocketing a lot of the money and not telling her tenants about it. They were old, they just didn't know. And they had no control over it. She was in charge of those checks. They were sent to her address. Guess what, folks? She goes to jail again. This is the weirdest recipe I've ever made in my life and this is so gross looking. Back to the story. Dorothea gets out of jail yet again, and now she goes to live with her friend Ruth Monroe. Dorothea comes up with this idea that the both of them were going to open up a catering company. So they decide to open up a joined bank account together. A bank account that was supposed to fund their catering business. So they open up this bank account, and within days of opening it up, Ruth gets sick. Like, her kids go to check on her, regularly they come over to her place to see how she's doing and one of the last times they saw their mother she was sick but her kids didn't really worry about her because they knew that Dorothina ran a caregiving business and they figured that Dorothina would take care of their mother after all this was one of Dorothina's really good friends. Like she was letting her stay with her after she had just gotten out of jail. Ruth was acting so weird. She was acting depressed. She was out of it. She was just sick. And she wasn't the type of person that would get sick like that. It was just not normal for her to be acting like that. And within a couple days of Ruth being sick, she actually died. Her death was actually ruled a suicide due to a drug overdose. For dinner, I'm gonna be making Dorothina's mango ham steak. Dorothina gets questioned by the police, but it comes back that she's 100% innocent. They think that she has nothing to do with Ruth's suicide, her murder. You know that joint bank account that they made together? Well, Dorothina took all of the money from it and she opened up another caregiving business. Can you guess where at? 21 F Street in Sacramento, California. Not just the same street, but the same exact house that she was running her last caregiving business out of, which was illegal because after she had gotten arrested the last time, the court had forbidden her from ever opening up another caregiving business again. But here she is. I'm supposed to puree this mango, but I'm literally just gonna smash it up in this bag. Mango puree. When Dorothina reopened up her caregiver house, once again, everything was going really good for her. She had tenants that would come and go. She had regular tenants that were paying her full time to live there. She would take care of them. She would cook them breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Some of them, she would bathe them. She would give them haircuts. A lot of her tenants were elderly people and they were still getting their social security checks mailed to her house. She was still cashing their checks even though she wasn't supposed to until one of her tenants went missing. His name was Bert Montoya and he was a disabled man that had schizophrenia. His social worker was unable to get a hold of him and had no idea where he was at. So she paid a visit to the house that he was living at, Dorothina's house, and he wasn't there and she couldn't find any of his things there. And Dorothina told her that, oh, he just left. He went to a different house and he's working with different doctors and I'm sure he's doing just fine. But the social worker did not buy it at all. Like she knew something was wrong there. So she calls the police to have a wellness check done. And while she was there, she noticed that there was a bunch of dirt like thrown all over Dorothina's front yard. And it looked like there had been fresh holes dug. So the police show up at Dorothina's place. The moment she opens the door, it reeks. Like it smells so bad. You could probably even smell it before she opened the door. And so the police go and they look through the entire house. They're not finding anything. By the way, what is this? They look everywhere in the house for him, but they're not finding him. They're not finding any of his belongings. Like it's as if he wasn't even there. So the police look around the whole house and they're like, he's obviously not here. But the social workers had told the police that it looked like she had holes in her front yard. Like someone was digging holes, like the size of a human body in her front yard. The police tell Dorothina, yeah, everything's fine. We just have to search 
your front yard. Do you have any shovels we can use? Because we only have two. And there was three police officers. This is a ham steak. You didn't know, because I did it. Dorothina is like, yeah, I totally have an extra shovel that you can borrow. So the police are like digging in her front yard for about 45 minutes. And then they hit something. It was a human femur that they found. And they didn't find Bert. They found a woman who looked like she was like in her 70s. I'm gonna go grill this now. Dinner would not be complete without a dessert. So I'm going to make Dorothina's rhubarb pie. So they find this woman's body and they're like, okay, if she's buried here, who else is buried here? At that point, they are, were already thinking that Kurt was buried there somewhere. They start digging up the entire front and backyard. And guess what they found? They found seven bodies and one of them was Bert. All of the bodies had one thing in common. They had all died from a drug overdose. Just like Dorothina's best friend, Ruth. Same drug, it was like a sleeping pill and she would give it to them with alcohol. She would give this to them regularly and eventually it would build up in their system and ultimately it would kill them. How was she able to drag them down a flight of stairs? That I don't know. A lot of people think that Dorothina had someone helping her. She would actually go to halfway houses and ask some of the guys there, hey, uh, can you do some yard work for me? I'll pay you some money. And they wouldn't think anything of it. These were people who had just gotten out of jail and they didn't have a job and they needed money. So they were just helping some little old lady with her gardening. Little did they know that they were actually digging holes for her tenant's dead bodies. Dorothina did go to prison, but she was only convicted of three murders when she actually murdered nine people. And I didn't even tell you about one of her ex-husbands that she murdered because yes, she murdered one of her ex-husbands too. Why would this little old lady kill these people? These people were getting checks to her house regularly. When they would die, no one was notified of it. So she would just take the checks for herself. She did this to seven People. Dorothina Puentes got life in prison and her house is still there. I was thinking about taking a trip to 21 F Street in Sacramento and looking at Dorothina's house and maybe doing a paranormal investigation there. If you want to see that, make sure to give this video a thumbs up. All of the food is ready, so let's try it. <laughs> so this is a fruit salsa. You like it? Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. okay. This is the mango ham steak. It's good. <laughs> mm. You like that? That's good. That is good. Mm. Woohoo. Really? Yeah, that's good. That's weird. It looks like you got it out of a landfill. <laughs> what? Yeah. Whoa, that's good. You don't like it? All right. Yeah. Oh, 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 the pie. No, I just spilled it all over the plate. I'm good. It's good? I'm good. Okay, wait, let me try it. Oh my God, it's sweet. What if I told you that all these recipes were made by cereal killer? What do you mean? All of these recipes, they were developed and made by the cereal killer, Dorothina Puentes. She like killed seven people and buried them in her front yard. And she came up with all these recipes that you just ate. She killed actual people. Yeah, she's an actual real cereal. Not with them recipes. Yeah. Did she kill them with how good her cooking was? No. I mean, that's good. That's just in. Cereal killers are great cooks. <laughs> if you like true crime and you like cooking, make sure to hit the subscribe button down below, click the bell button, turn on your post notifications so you don't miss a video. I'm Mackenzie Marie, and if you're new here, I make all things. Literally, from paranormal investigations to dyeing my hair with markers. So make sure you stick around because you're definitely gonna wanna check it out. If you like this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up. That way I know, so I can make more videos like this. If you want to, you can follow me on any of my social medias, at Mackenzie Marie, because when I'm not here, I'm definitely over there, and you should be too. I love you so freaking much, and I will see you here in my next video. Toodles!